Apostle Paul tells us in Galatians 6. Galatians 6, we're going to focus on verse 8. It says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So, the Apostle Paul is telling us that whatever we sow into, that's what we're going to get a return on. That's what we're going to see manifest as a return on that investment is so if we sow into the flesh and sowing into the flesh looks like sowing into essentially sin sowing into sowing into what is not of the Lord sowing into the nature of man that makes man selfish, sinful, lawless, rebellious. <clears throat> Sowing into the, the parts of man that separate him from God. That makes him act in a way that limits God to be God in a person's in one's life. We sow into the spirit and then we reap corruption. Corruption is basically meaning you're sowing into yourself and you're sowing into a system that does not build man, does not make man better. Because the flesh, as if we were to go back in Galatians 5, the flesh, as the Apostle Paul is explains it are all the different types of ways that God that man expresses himself when he's out of the will of God fornications adultery uncleanness <clears throat> variance strife um, all of the the negative aspects man will find himself walking in these things and it's saying that it makes your life more corrupt more discord more confusion <clears throat> so God because God is a spirit and he says that those that worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth so he's saying the Lord is telling us that when we sow to the spirit, we shall reap of the spirit life everlasting. So when we take our mind off self, when we, when if God grants repentance and he allows man, he accepts man's repentance and man becomes born again of the water and of the spirit, he now has open him himself up to the work of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God works in his heart, in his mind, and empowers him and enables him to obey God. <clears throat> and he begins to reap. He begins to see the manifestations of life. He has an he begins to He begins, man truly begins to live when he is living by the Spirit of God. <clears throat> when the Apostle Paul told us, when we walk in the Spirit, that's how we do not fulfill the desires of the flesh. <clears throat> so walking in the Spirit is man denying himself. That's man taking on Christ, and that's man then submitting to God and allowing God to, 
he relies and he depends on God. And he's allowing God to work and to operate in his daily life. So sowing into the spirit looks like submission to the will of God. It looks like letting the holiness of God train your thinking, shape your thinking, reshape your thinking. <clears throat> Allowing the, the purifying of your heart to go forth. Because the Bible says that our hearts are, are deceitful and desperately wicked. But our hearts are not to be dormant when we get saved because it is something that God still wants to be man to examine. He still wants something to be open to the things of God. He wants that to still be open to the things of God because he said the pure in heart see God. <clears throat> so as we sow into the spirit, we worship God in spirit and in truth. And we allow the sword of the spirit to give us power to defeat the devil, to <clears throat> resist the devil, to fight the, 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 the mindsets, to fight the sin within, to fight and combat the evil nature, and to fight against the world that desires to come back into our heart. Because as you submit to the spirit of God, you're beginning to be transformed in your thinking. <clears throat> and the love of the world is beginning to leave you and you're beginning to accept. Your heart is now becoming pure, which means now you're beginning to receive the love of the Father. So you begin to take on the very nature and the very person of Jesus Christ. So you begin to act like and you begin to look like where you're going to spend forever, which is if you endure to the end and you obey and you submit submit and live out the word of God and righteousness, live out the will of God and the purposes of God and righteousness, that will look like spending forever with Jesus. <clears throat> so we sow into the spirit when we obey God, we submit to the work of the spirit of God in our lives. <clears throat> Every day we let the righteousness of God be our focus because the word of God says that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So it's the will of God that we sow into the spirit of God, sowing into the Lord. <clears throat> excuse me, sowing into the spirit of God, focusing on God, concentrating on the things of God. Submitting and being humble to the work of the spirit. So that's today's word is Know that even if you think you have not, you're not doing anything, you are sowing into one of these systems. You are either sowing into your flesh, meaning you're sowing into yourself, or you're sowing into satisfying man's carnal desires, man's desires without God. The earthly, sensual, devilish side of man, you're, you're sowing into that. Or you're sowing into the spirit. You are taking, you are becoming spiritually minded, which is bringing you life and bringing you peace. Because you're you are living for God, and you have made peace with God. <clears throat> so you see Him in your life, and you see Him be. You see manifestations of the peace of God in your life because you made peace with Him. And you are using the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to assist you and 
and help you <clears throat> confront the parts of life that desire to, in moments, work against the will of God for your life. So you sow into the spirit and you begin to reap life. You begin to see life and you're on your way to eternal life. You're on your way to spend it forever with Jesus when you submit to the Spirit of God. And that's the desire of the Lord. It's for the saints, the Christians, the sons of God, to be led by the Spirit of God. When you are led by the Spirit of God, that's how you are sowing to the Spirit. Because the Spirit, the Spirit of God is leading you leading you in your life. It is leading and guiding and governing in your life. So God is at work in your life and God is working on your behalf. <clears throat> so may the Spirit of God so may the Spirit of God develop us May the Spirit of God give us grace and knowledge and power to live in a way to where we submit to the Spirit of God so we can truly reap and life everlasting today and forevermore in Jesus' name.